Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. Uh, what a night it was for TV Malopez. Um, so big shout out to to TL. Um, but it was kind of the unthinkable, right? Um, we all thought, and there's not a person in the world who would disagree with this, um, that if Teal was going to win, he was going to do it via power. Uh, he wasn't going to outbox Lomachenko over 12 rounds. Um, it, you know, it, you know, there was basically, you know, this. Four possible outcomes. You can have Lomachenko by decision. That was the most popular one. You can have Lomachenko by points. I mean, Lomachenko by decision. You can have Lomachenko by stoppage. That was a possibility. You can have T.O. by stoppage. That was a possibility. Or you can have T.O. by decision. And that really wasn't <laughs> on the table for most people. Uh, but that's what we got. And there was one gambling site that said uh, they had not received one bet, a single bet, for Lopez uh, by decision. Um. That's crazy. Tiafimo Lopez has shown another level. Uh, we all knew he was physically awesome, physically a freak. Uh, you know, lightning quick reflexes, um, incredibly fast, incredibly fast hands and feet, and incredible power that he throws big power shots, violent power shots from a litany of angles. We And he never jabbed. You go back and you watch some of his fights, Diego Magdaleno, um, um, Takano, uh, Takanini, the the Japanese guy. Um, he, he, even the Kobe fight, he just doesn't jab. There's no jab. Um, tak, um, and, and that was what my concern was. You know, if he's just trying to load up, he gives. Uh, Loma every opportunity to counter that come inside land a combination pivot and get out and I, I thought that's what we we're gonna say I, I thought Lopez yeah you know, I picked Tiafimo by points I mean, and I thought Lopez was gonna fight a completely different fight that he was gonna load up he was gonna try to land big power shots uh, and Loma was gonna be able to get inside counter do his do his work and get out um, you know and like Lopez I thought Lopez had moments I said that Lopez has a little bit drop him and hurt him at points uh, but. Loma's work rate and volume would carry the day. Loma landed 31 punches through the first seven rounds of the fight. That's about four punches around, four and a half punches around. That's inconceivable. Guy, this is Loma who, who used to throw 100 punches around, land 35. He landed 31 punches through seven rounds. He landed more punches in the 11th round than he landed in the first six rounds combined. He was. Thoroughly outboxed, and none of us thought, you know, myself included, obviously thought Tiafimo Lopez was capable of that. None of us thought that. That was a masterclass performance. He outboxed the professor. He outboxed the the master boxer. Uh, he out jabbed him. He outfaded him, and it was that was a great performance. He elevates himself to fighter of the year based off that one performance. There'll be guys who fight two, maybe three times this year, but I, I can't see how they outdo what uh, Tiafimo Lopez did on Saturday night in the bubble. Unbelievable performance. The other thing I really want to get into is um, let's get into the scorecards. I had a 116, 112. 
I think 116, 112, 117, 111 are about the right scorecards. That, that's where this fight was. And it, it wasn't close. Everyone, I, I think, because the, the one scorecard is Julie Letterman's 119 to 109. That, is, uh, that scorecard is wrong. It's less wrong than Andre's Woods even scorecard is. Because Julie Letterman, A, got the fight right. And you could easily score that fight 10 rounds to two. And that is not... Tiafimo Lopez, I mean, uh, Vizela Lomachenko definitely won two rounds, the eighth and the 11th. That's it. Every other round, you can make an argument, and a pretty decent argument, that Lopez won. Every single other round. The ninth and the 10th were closed. Yes, Lopez did good work in the, uh, T, uh, Loma did good work in those rounds, but so did Tiafimo Lopez. Those were not clear cut. I said put a circle around nine. I gave it to uh, Lopez. But you, you could have gave nine to Loma. And 10, Loma probably won, but it wasn't clear cut. Lopez did good work in the 10th. Lopez did some work in the 11th, but he clearly lost that round. And then he dominated the 12th. So realistically, I gave the 5th to Loma. I gave the 5th, the 8th, the 10th, and the 11th to Loma. And then I gave every other round. So I gave the uh, of the first seven, I gave six of the first seven rounds every round, but five. And then I gave them. Uh, the ninth and the twelfth, eight to four. The fight wasn't that close, guys. It really wasn't that close. They they traded. Um, Lopez had you know Loma had a run, but realistically, if you have it seven nothing, that is a, probably the right scorecard. I gave one round to, to Loma. And I was talking to a buddy of mine. And he said Loma didn't win that round. He had it seven nothing at the seven. I had six one. The right score was probably seven. Maybe I was a little generous to Loma to give him a round, but Lopez dominated the first seven rounds of the fight. He gave away the first six doing nothing. So it's hard to win a fight when you give away six rounds and score no knockdown and get no deductions. You can't win. The best you can do is a draw if you win every other round. And he didn't because he lost the seventh and he lost the twelfth. So off the bat, it's 8-4, right? 8-4. If you give him, if you give him the ninth or the tenth, now you have 9-3. The right scorecard in those fights are 8-4, 9-3. And I want to give you that. Lopez won the second round. Loma landed, what, three shots in the second round? You want to score that round for him because one was a nice right hand? Lopez dominated the round. He dominated the pace. He hit. He scored more shots. He out-jabbed him. He out him. He out-boxed him. Because Loma lands one right hand, perfect right hand, that didn't really hurt him that much. Snap his head back. Good shot, but didn't really have that much effect. Doesn't give the round to Loma. Now, this is like when um, – Victor Ortiz fought Floyd Mayweather. People are trying to give Victor Ortiz rounds. It's like, no, don't try to give anyone rounds. He didn't win any of those rounds. He lost every single round. In the first seven rounds, Loma landed a good shot in the second, a good shot in the third. He lost every single round in the first seven rounds. He really did. So off the bat, he can't win a decision. Andre Ward's card is worse, worse than Julie Letterman's card. If you had it even, if you had a Loma, your card is worse than Julie Letterman's card. And Julie Letterman's card was not good. And I, I pointed this out to my co-host, Matt Hunter, on, on MCR Combat. I said before the fight started, when I saw the judges, I said, Julie Letterman and Steve Weissfeld are terrible judges. They're terrible judges. They just score for the aggressor. If you come forward, you win the round. And I, I thought that was interesting, given the fact that no one was betting on Lopez to win a decision. You have two judges who are going to prefer Lopez's style. And they did. And Weissfeld was the one that had it 117-111. One, uh, and then um, Tim Cheatham. Is, uh, I guess the Farragut, he had at 116, 112. Again, nothing wrong with that scorecard. 116, 112, 117, 111 is about where this fight was, guys. This fight was not that close. It really wasn't. Um, I, I, I want to hear your, your scorecard. I mean, did you guys have this coming down to the last round? Because you shouldn't have. And if you do, go back and watch it. And, and just kind of count who's landing the better shots. Who's landing the cleaner shots. Who's landing more shots. Look. Loma gave away six rounds. He lost the seventh. He loses the fight. It's over. Unless he scores a knockdown, which he didn't. And he did great work in the 11th. It looked like he was changing the tempo of the fight in the 11th. In the 11th, my boy Des Bryant tweeted out, um, Lopez is done. It looked like that. I had Lopez so far off my scorecard going in the 12th that Loma needed a knockout or at least several knockdowns to even make this close. All right? So I'm like, that's not out of the question the way Lopez was in trouble in the left, although he landed some nice body shots there at the end. He did some good work at the end of that round. But it looked like he was on his last leg. And then Lopez comes out like a champion and closes the show, dominates, lands 50 punches according to Copybox, which, 
You make of that what you want. And, and, and had Loma in a world of trouble. Um, that was a championship virtuoso performance from Tiafima Lopez. Now, I want to get into what's next for both guys. There are obviously the rematch is what we're looking at next. Um, I, I don't know if it, look, Tiafima says, Why? Why should I make a rematch? Well, because Loma was considered the champion of the weight class, the best guy in the weight class, and he gave you a fight. You don't have to. There's no rematch because you don't have to. But why not return that? Why not return that favor and say, sure, I'll give you a rematch. You gave me the fight, right? You could have fought other guys. You could have fought anyone you wanted. You were the name. You were, you were the recognized guy at 135. Now T.P. Lopez is. So why does he give the rematch back to Loma? I would say that. Now he doesn't have to, but I, I think we will get a rematch if Loma wants it. I think Loma's out of his weight class. And I've been saying this for a while. I said it against Lars. I said it against Campbell. I said it against Pedraza. He's fighting in the wrong weight class. I think he needs to go to 130. Uh, I, I think he should fight Prichelt or Valdez, winner, which will obviously be Prichelt by murder. Um, and then he, he's on the right side. He can go fight uh, Jamel Herring or Frampton or the fight everyone would want to see, which I think is the big money fight, is um, Shakur Stevenson. Now, that could be a while away, right? But he can go fight other guys in that 130-pound weight class. Like, I think go fight Prichelt or Valdez. That's an easily makeable fight. Uh, but I think 130 is the right division for Vasil Lomachenko, and there's plenty of fights for him at 130. Um, if I were Loma, look, Loma's got an ego, obviously. He is a three-division world champ. He's a Hall of Fame fighter, a two-time gold medalist. He's a pound-for-pound -pound top 10. He's a great fighter. He thinks he can beat Lopez, right? But the question is, you know, he, 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 you know, the, you know the question is, is that his best weight class? Is that his best option? I don't think it is. I think he should go fight 130 and go try to pick a fight with Shakur Stevenson. I'm not saying he's going to win that fight. I don't know if he wins that fight. But I think that's the best bet. Um, now, what's next for Tiafimo Lopez? Obviously, there's a rematch, which I think takes precedence. But I don't think Loma takes it. So what does that leave us? That leaves us everything in the 135-pound division. And I think, right now, Tiafimo Lopez is the biggest name in the division. Um, we have Tank. And, and, and Leo Santa Cruz coming up here in a couple of weeks. If Tank wins, that fight's phenomenal. I don't know that PBC works with TFM Lopez. Devin Haney could. I don't know what network that would go on. It would be on the zone. It would be on ESPN. That's the fight we should see. Like That's the fight I really want to see. Um, the other one would be uh, Garcia or Campbell, the winner of that fight. But I think the winner of that fight fights... Um, Haney. So I, I don't know, right? Like at 135, if it's not Lopez, if it's not Loma Lopez too, then I, I don't know what Lopez does at 135. Now, there's plenty of great options. He could fight Cambosis, right? There's plenty of guys there he could fight, but he blows Cambosis out, right? The one I'd want to see is Hector Tanahara. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know who's going to risk putting their guy in with Tiafima Lopez after that performance. That's the problem. I mean, um, I, it, 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 my gut reaction is no, the rematch doesn't come off. I think uh, it doesn't come off. I think um, Lopez is going to push for a Haney fight. I don't know if he gets it. I think he might. I, I, if, if you want me to bet right now, I, and I had to put my money on one opponent, I think Haney fight, uh, Lopez fights Haney next. Uh, call me a dreamer. But I, I really see that fight happening. Um, and Loma goes back down to 130, maybe takes a tune-up fight, and then fights for Chelsea oh, Valdez winner. That's kind of how I see it. Um, but let me know what you guys think. Let me know how. Let me know your scorecard. Show me your. Give me those scorecards. Show me those scorecards. Um, I had it 116, 112. Um, I don't think the fight was particularly close. I thought Lopez won wide. I thought Lopez won most of the rounds. Um, I thought you could argue he won 10 rounds, anywhere between eight or nine is probably right. Um. But let me know what you guys think. Leave your, leave your thoughts, comments below. Follow me at 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. You can find my Fighter of the Week article, which is no surprise this week, is TV Lopez on fightpost.co.uk, fightpost.uk. Um, from Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. 
Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.